Race one of the 2021 Pirelli Aragon round gets underway. Good start from Jonathan Ray, who'll surge to the first turn. Alongside him, though, Scott Redding has made a decent jump. Brilliant getaway from Alex Lowe's, who comes around the outside of Scott Redding and up into second position to make it a KRT 1-2. Redding will look to respond. Tom Sykes already relegated to fourth position. That was a brilliant jump from Lowe's, following in the tyre tracks of Jonathan Ray to lead us early on. Garrett Gerloff then sits in fifth position with Charles Davies having been relegated down to sixth. So Gerloff, the Texan, has already come through on one. He's going to now make it two as he goes side by side with Tom Sykes. A new order at the front of the field. It's Ray from Lowe's, from Reading. And look at Braz Gatlioglu diving through from 10th on the grid, remember, top rack. And he's picked off now Tom Sykes. Sykes will get bundled out of the way by Charles Davies. Let's see if he's able to just be a little bit aggressive now at this point. See if he can set something up on the run into the corkscrew. Davis able to get down the inside, use that drive as well. Just got the tyre sheet from Pirelli. Davis is on the X tyre, so is Toprak and Gurlop. Redding is using the SC0, the same tyre as the Kawasaki riders. Well, there's BK uh, debutant Tito Rabat has dropped off our timing screen, so I wonder uh, whether that's a transponder issue or indeed something has happened to Rabat around the circuit. We may catch up with that shortly. In the meanwhile, diving through on the inside, Charles Davies there found out by uh, Raz Gatlioglu into turn one. We have had confirmation now that it's a uh, technical problem for Tito Rabat who uh, pulled up out and around the circuit and we now catch up with Rabat. So uh, he will be our first retirement from race one of the 2021 season. Top rack, Raz Gatlioglu through at turn one. We've just caught the end of that. So uh, Scott Redding has been hemorrhaging time over the three most recent laps. And finally, the number 54 is released. Raz Gatlioglu has successively picked off Gerloff, Davies, and now Redding. So Davies will be the next one in line to try and make his move on at Scott Redding. The uh, opportunity knocks here for Top rack to escape away if Redding holds back Davies for another few corners or so. Big move there from Chas Davies. That was very bold through turn number two, where we've seen plenty of incidents already this weekend so far. And uh, Davies a little bit aggressive there on at Scott Redding. And I suspect that Ducati versus Ducati, Scott Redding won't be too happy about that. One retirement in this race so far, uh, Tito Rabat. That looks like the second as uh, Tati Mercado uh, despondently brings the MIE Racing Honda back into the pits. This is where the fight is. Fifth, sixth and seventh positions, all still covered by less than a second. This is going to be our third retirement of the race. Samuele Cavalieri, and uh, he was actually next in the order ahead uh, of uh, Mercado and Cresson. Dropped back behind Cresson and now pulls into the pits. So uh, Cavalieri with problems. The third retirement of race one in this 2021 campaign. Further back down the order, Tom Sykes has uh, just picked off Garrett Gerloff for uh, seventh position. And uh, further back, Axel Bassani through on uh, Isaac Vinales. So a couple of changes uh, lower down the field. In fact, Gerloff is really struggling here. Garrett Gerloff uh, loses out on eighth position as well to a resurgent Michael Ruben Rinaldi. So Sykes and Rinaldi running the leader's pace in the mid one minute 51s. And Garrett Gerloff, who's dropped off by about half a second a lap, is punished as a result. Firstly, dropping off the tail of Bautista and then picked off by Sykes and Rinaldi on lap 40. Turn four then for Alex Lowe's, ducking through on Raz Gatlioglu, who immediately responds. And that's what R Top Rack had to do, was immediately get back in front of Alex Lowe's, because it is the number 22 Kawasaki that is the faster of the two at this stage of the race. He might not have been able to get the job done into two of the heavier breaking points, but Lowe's is clearly the faster man. He's got to shake off Davies. He's got to attack, attack, attack on the final three laps. This must be attempt number four from Alex Lowe's and still Toprak manages to hold on on the brakes, just about getting through and across the front of him. Toprak has not ridden the optimum line though there. Lowe's is able to sweep through. He's significantly faster. Where can Alex Lowe's strike? It's not going to be down the hill. Davies, while these two are dicing it out over second position, is closing in to Lowe's for third. We've got Yamaha, Kawasaki, Ducati, evenly matched machines for race pace here in Aragon. The opening race of the season 
season. Lowe's tried a lap ago on top rack, couldn't get it done into the final two left-handers. He's even closer this time around. Lowe's dives through on the inside. Top rack switches to the inside. Lowe's has to lift it up ever so slightly and Top rack responds. These two are dicing for position. They've swapped and changed on a few occasions already. At the start of lap 17, Top rack tries to switch to the inside down the straight to defend against Alex Lowe's, but Lowe's will not be fended off. And finally, Alex Lowe's makes his move stick. Top rack may well try to respond into the fourth turn. He knows that if Lowe's is given clear air, he may well escape away. The 22 Kawasaki is looking good enough at this stage of the race. Lowe's in second, Raz Gatlioglu in third, Davies under pressure from Reading to evenly match machines, but it's Reading who will have the slipstream and probably the better run coming onto the back straight as well. Davies holds on on the brakes. Can he defend the inside line coming off the final turn? No, he can't. Davies has generally preferred the wider sweep. Should give him some momentum into turn one, but Scott Reading is through for fourth position. Ray, Lowe's, Raz Gatlioglu, Reading and Davies, your order going into the final lap here in Motorland. Aragorn. Raz Gatlioglu was always going to try and make a move on Lowe's. He just dives through the first time he's close enough. Lowe's immediately responds. Brilliant racing between the green Kawasaki of Alex Lowe's and the blue Pata Yamaha of Raz Gatlioglu. And Top Rack on the 54 is back into P2. Where can Lowe's answer back? Well, for Lowe's, he's going to have to try it on the run into the wall, but he hasn't been close enough to use that break point to be able to be aggressive against Top Rack. This is where he's had a run a few times on Top Rack. Top Rack able to run around the edge. Side, though. Oh, and he's done it again, Raz Gatlioglu. Lowe's, I think, had moved across the path of Toprak, but Toprak still came around the outside with a screech of brake dust, and it's Raz Gatlioglu and Lowe's holding one another up that are now presenting a golden opportunity to Scott Redding as we head towards the final sector. Lowe's building himself up. He's on the tail of Toprak. There's less than a bike length between them. I don't think Redding is quite close enough to stake a claim for a podium position. Lowe's certainly is close enough to challenge Raz Gatlioglu. He's going to go to the outside of him. Two left-handers still to go. Raz Gatlioglu aggressively across the front of Alex Lowe's, who's going to have to try and run it into the line. Up front, it's Jonathan Ray heading towards a century. Jonathan Ray takes his 100th victory in World SBK, and Alex Lowe's is through on top rack. Raz Gatlioglu in the run down to the line. A brilliant first race of the 2021 season. Race number two of the Pirelli Aragon round for 2021 is underway. Garrett Gerloff with a decent jump. Lowe's has made a decent start as well, but gets trapped between Gerloff and Jonathan Ray. So Garrett Gerloff has picked his way past Alex Lowe's early on. Charles Davies in fourth position. Decent jump as well by one of the BMWs. That'll be Michael Vandermark uh, directly behind. Raz Gatlioglu, though, has gone in front of him for fifth position. Reading already upper places into P7. Head of Alvaro Bautista and Kota Nazane. Lowe's responds on Gerloff through for P2 as Michael Vandermark as uh, Michael Ruben Rinaldi rather makes his way to the end of the pit lane and that's the distance he's now got to cover the riders making their way through uh, turns six and seven at the front of the field and only now is Rinaldi on the 21 Ducati making his way through Davies has gone down Chaz Davies on the number seven the uh, light blue go 11 Ducati falling from fourth position and that's disaster for Chaz Davies but it's also a demonstration of just how tricky these track conditions are in Motorland Aragon Gerloff we saw in the sprint race was also really competitive as well. That Yamaha just gives a rider confidence. It's one of the best chassis on the grid and you're always able to see it very competitive in these kind of changeable conditions where it's just about the rider feeling good on the bike. So Gerloff very much a danger man. Charles Davies making his way into the pits and that will surely be to uh, make a change of tyre and get back out onto the track. You're watching the fight for second position, a duel between Yamaha and Kawasaki. Alex Lowe's has finished second in each of the two races so far this weekend, passed by Garrett Gerloff who finished third behind him in the Super Bowl race earlier on today. 
Yeah, and right now it is a case of we're very close to those dry times that you need. But looking further down the field, you can see Gerloff trying to be aggressive on the run in. Down goes Garrett Gerloff attempting to make the pass on Jonathan Ray. Ray takes to the gravel trap, escapes a, a real near miss there for Jonathan Ray. He's returned to the head of the field, but raises his hand. He realizes that he's effectively taken a PlayStation shortcut there, and he has to slot back in. Alex Lowe's takes up the lead. Toprak Razgatlioglu is the main beneficiary, and Toprak is going to lead at the end of lap number three. Scything his way past Lowe's, we're going to see the incident again. Yeah, look at Gerloff just dives down the inside the moves not there to be made and uh, for Gerloff loses the front and uh, Jonathan does very well to be able to keep himself upright there get himself back onto the track but uh, for Garrett this is an opportunity it's not there to be made at that moment in time he's faster than Jonathan Ray the opportunity to make a move was going to turn up but uh, Gerloff always very aggressive in trying to make a move wants to hit the front and uh, unfortunately for Garrett unfortunately for Jonathan just a little bit too early in the race Jonathan Ray has a bobble that's going to be pretty easy for Scott Redding to get through. Lap 5 of 18, and Scott Redding makes further progress up to fourth position as Sir Alex Lowe drops a place to Michael Vandermark. Redding appears to be the man in the pound seats at present. He's got the right choice of tyre cladded onto that uh, Aruba IT Racing Factory Ducati. He's picked off Ray. Lowe's the next KRT man in line, and this could well be done into turn number one at the start of lap number six then. And Razgatlioglu might lose the lead here to Michael Vandermark. Vandermark is snaking under breaking into turn one, but he's got it done. Vandermark, your new race leader, two passes in one turn because Reading has also got the better of Lowe's. So it's Michael Vandermark, the Dutchman up front, the Turkish rider, top rack Razgatlioglu in second, and the Brits three, four, and five, but it's now Reading, Lowe's, and Ray. Kawasaki's uh, unbroken run so far of one twos in 2021 is looking decidedly on shaky ground. Vandermark leading as we ride on board with Scott Redding, making that pass very, very early, coming through the uh, kink at turn 11 on top rack Razgatlioglu, and Redding went bold, went for a gamble on the grid, and that uh, gamble looks set to pay off handsomely. He was very quickly up to pace, lost a couple of seconds on lap number one, but now he's making the expected progress. They come through the uh, sequence of two chicanes, Redding stalking Michael Vandermark, bit of a moment there for top rack Razgatlioglu, Lowe's might be back through here for third position, Redding should be able to make the pass on Vandermark and will be your new race leader. It is Scott Redding then who hits the front, down the back straight, Vandermark through for uh, second position, third now recovered by Raz Gatlioglu at the end of the straight, so Lowe's couldn't quite pick it up coming off turn at number 15, and having made that move on top rack, goes back behind him once again. Lowe's looking uh, more feisty though perhaps than Jonathan Ray at this stage at very least, lap 7 of 18 here in Motorland Aragon just comes down to how much of that tyre are you willing to use at this stage, just seeing that Garrett Gerloff has a long lap penalty for that incident earlier on with Jonathan Ray, so he'll have to take that on the exit of the corkscrew in the next few laps, this is the number 31 making his progress now, just up into ninth position now as he recovers. Once again, Alex Lowe's is able to make his way through on top rack Razgatlioglu, but we saw the Turkish rider responding into turn 16 last lap around. Has Lowe's, by getting the move done a little bit earlier this time around, put himself in a position to escape away through turns 14 and 15. Jonathan Ray also looks like he wants to get the better of Razgatlioglu, who was the slowest man out of the lead five on at lap number six. And uh, Razgatlioglu lost over half a second just to Jonathan Ray alone. Top rack, though, has got plenty of speed down that back straight. We saw him recover against Lowe's a lap ago and once again he's able to be bold on the brakes into turn 16 and Lowe's thinks better of going side by side with top rack in that situation lives to fight another day settles back into fourth position Lowe's again makes his manoeuvre in towards turn number 12. We watch on board with Jonathan Ray. It looks as though Ray might have got through as well. He has. So it's Vandermark, Lowe's, Ray and Razgatlioglu. And Toprak has been picked off. Formation flying by the KRT riders. And uh, Ray now might have a think about getting through on Lowe's. He obviously saw that Vandermark was escaping away, did Alex Lowe's. Nice and aggressive on, John, on Alex Lowe's on the run down in towards that last corner, able to just cut back across. He had been out trying to cool, make sure he was able to cool those tyres. Uses the slipstream well, and uh, for Jonathan Ray now up into third position. Nice move. 
We ride on board with Jonathan Ray as he makes a straightforward sweep to the inside down the back straight. A big old moment there for Alex Lowe's as they came into the breaking zone ahead off turn 16. Ray has overcooked it, attempting to make that pass on Vandermark. The Dutchman immediately responding. Ray with the wider arc will have the longer run down the start finish straight. Could make the move into turn one and Alex Lowe's tries to slot between the two of them. Ray backs out of the move on Vandermark who holds on for second position. Oh, they're queuing up now behind Michael Vandermark. Sykes fancies a move on top rack. Top rack's close to Lowe's. Nothing in it. A tenth of a second between Vandermark, Ray and Lowe's. Last time over the line at the end of lap number 10 and still plenty of mileage left in this race number two. Right on board here in the battle for second position. Vandermark is going to cover the inside line and he's going to cover second place against Jonathan Ray. But Vandermark is the slowest rider in this group at the moment. That's working nicely in favour of his teammate Tom Sykes. But it could soon be Vandermark at the back of this group the way things are going. They drop down through the right hander once again. This is where Jonathan Ray got really close to Michael Vandermark last lap around. I think, if anything, uh, Ray's rhythm was affected by the Dutchman. Such was his uh, lack of speed through that chicane. Ray now right on the tail, less than a bike length behind Michael Vandermark, switches out from the slipstream, and it's now a question of who, who is bravest on the brakes, and the answer to that is Jonathan Ray. Moves across the front of Michael Vandermark into turn 16. Ray is through for second position. Alex Lowe's is the next man in line to have a go. Ray's got to defend that place into turn one. At the start of lap number 12, Redding has already got this lap underway. Vandermark looks so vulnerable, but he has been able to get in front of Ray again into turn number one, and still Michael Vandermark is able to fend off this group behind him. This really is quite remarkable for the number 60 BMW. Ray has seen that uh, second position during this race, but it's Vandermark who's been able to respond on each occasion. Ray picking up the bike much earlier. He'll try and make the move again into turn number 12, and this time he's as close as he's been. Still, Vandermark tries to outbreak Jonathan Ray. Ray's gone in hard. He's also gone in deep. Vandermark will be able to get alongside, but now he'll be stuck with the outside through the right-hander, and Jonathan Ray has timed that to perfection. Vandermark can't immediately respond, and Alex Lowe's could do Ray a favor here as well if he attempts to make the move. Alex Lowe's has actually got through now on Michael Vandermark. So uh, we uh, missed that overtake from, from Lowe's on Vandermark. Vandermark now responding. Here we pick them up. And Tom Sykes is right in with them as well. And Lowe's has gone to the inside and Sykes has gone to the outside. They're three abreast into turn number one at the start of lap 15. The two BMWs almost touch. And this is going to be an inevitable rivalry between the new boy on the block as far as BMW are concerned this season and uh, the old hand in Tom Sykes. And that fight is now going to be for fourth place because Alex Lowe's has got clear of them. We saw that Jonathan Ray was able to escape once he got ahead of the two BMWs. Lowe's now looking to do the same. Tom Sykes looking to the inside into turn 16, but there it is, exemplified perfectly that Vandermark has been bolder on the brakes than uh, all of the rivals around him in this race so far. Wasn't quite enough eventually to uh, keep Jonathan Ray and Alex Lowe's behind. Sean Muir looking on as his two men go to toe to toe, and uh, he will be having his fingers crossed here that they don't wipe one and out, another out, and cost BMW a series of points. It's Tom Sykes who makes his way through down the inside. Vandermark now forced to the outside of turn number two and finally Tom Sykes has got that move done and that is a fine performance from Tom Sykes just to put the uh, digit up and say I'm the number one in this team thank you very much the final lap here in Motorland Aragon for 2021. It's his third race victory around this circuit and the sixth of his Superbike World Championship career. Reading it is who wins it, took a gamble in the early stages on tyre choice and it has paid dividends handsomely.